Hallelujah. May God bless you and your family today. I pray that you will be inspired and challenged and changed by the Word of God during this time. Starting from today, I want to share the book of Kings in the Old Testament. I want you to read the book of Kings before you hear message. So, if possible, I would like you to stop here and read the first book of Kings chapter 1 and come back in order to understand I'm trying to share. Next Sunday, I will talk about chapter 2. So, I encourage you to read chapter 2 before you come here next Sunday. For those who don't have the Bible, I want to read chapter 1, verse 1 to 5 only. When the king David was old and well advanced in years, he could not keep warm, even when they put covers on him. So his servants said to him, Let us look for a young virgin to attend the king and take care of him. She can lie beside him so that our lord the king may keep warm. Then they searched throughout Israel for a beautiful girl and found Abishak, the Sumerite, and brought her to the king. The girl was very beautiful. She took care of the king and waited on him, but the king had no intimate relation with her. Now Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, put himself forward and said, I will be king. So he got chariot and horses ready with the fifty men to run ahead of him. This is the first book of uh, Kings, chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. The book of Kings tells many stories from David to the last king of Israel for 400 years. When this book was written, Israel was defeated by Babylon. The Babylonian army attacked Israel. They destroyed the temple of God and set house on fires. Many Israelites became captive and sent to Babylon to serve Babylonian as slaves. At the time, the Israelites had a question. For example, do we still have hope? Are we still God's people? Can we be recovered? Is God faithful and righteous? What kind of a leader we need in the future? Can he go back to Israel? And so on. During corona pandemic, people ask similar questions. Do we still have hope? Are we God's people? Does God take care of us? Is God faithful? What kind of a leader should he have to go through these difficulties? Can you go back to the normal life we had before the pandemic? My brothers and sisters, what kind of question do you have? I want you to get answers from the book of Kings. The book of Kings story begins with the latter parts of David's life. According to verse 1, David was very old and couldn't keep warm even when they put covers on him. So they brought a young woman to take care of David, meaning it was hard for David to live without help. Who was David? David was a great soldier, a prolific musician, and the king of Israel. He was a hero, but he became just an ordinary old man who needed help to live. David was not the David who defeated Goliath anymore. There is one more bitter thing David had. His son Adonias attempted to seize David's throne. It was betrayer. His son trying to snatch what David had. Could it be possible between a father and his son? Actually, wouldn't you be surprised when you find out that David's family is filled with rape, murder, incest, betrayal, injustice, and political intrigue? In today's scripture, Adonijah knew that David was powerless and that it was a good time to claim that he is the new king of Israel. In verse 5, he said, I will be king. He summoned the troops and powerful men in religion, military, and politics. He wanted to overturn David's throne. He tried to remove David, who was his father, and get power as a king. The story of David's family and the latter part of life was terrible and miserable. 
What caught my attention in today's scripture is that this book started with a bitter and unpleasant story. As you know, when the writer tells a story about king and heroes, the story usually starts with the miracle or supernatural things to glorify and beautify the story of kings. People usually want to hide their mistake, sin, and faults. But the writer of this book disclosed the dark side of even David. The story of King shows how pitiful and helpless David was. What do you think the writer tells us something David might not want to tell? The first lesson of today's story is to show how humans are weak beings. We need God. Amen. Even David, a man after God's own heart, became so weak, his son betrayed him and rebelled. Even though he was a king, there was not many people who supported him. Rather, those who had power went to Adonijah's side. So, my brothers and sisters, we cannot trust men who perish like a wild flower, but only God who is eternal and an unchangeable being. What does trusting God mean? It means to admit God is your Creator and to rely on Him in whatever you do and wherever you go. When you invite your plumber, you allow him to come into your house and let him do his job, right? When you invite God in your life, you allow God to come to your life and let Him lead you. This is what trusting God means. We should know that we will become like David someday. As time goes by, we are weakened like David. Before, that day, before the day come, invite Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord. Let Him lead you in His way. The second lesson of today's story is, even though we are weak, God is strong and He will accomplish His job for us. Before these things happened, God promised David, 1 Chronicles 22, verse 3, 10 state, You, David, will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side. His name will be Solomon, and I will grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. He is the one who will build a house for my name. David might have forgotten God's promise, or he might not have been able to do anything for Solomon. However, faithful God has never forgotten his promise for his people. God used Nathan and Bathsheba to tell David about the situation so that he could do something. Adonijah probably thought that his power and strategy could make him king. But God didn't allow him. Rather, God gave the throne to Solomon who was supposed to have it. We are weak and we are still becoming weak. Sometimes we forget what we should do and sometimes we can do what we are supposed to do. However, our faith in God will accomplish His work for us even when, even when we give up everything. God will not rest until He finishes His job for us. That's why we have hope. That's why we are not disappointed even when we meet the storm of life. During this pandemic, it is easy to break our peace of mind and it is easy to become weak and disappointed. However, remember God who worked for David according to his greatness. God who took care of David takes care of you and leads you. I hope and pray that the grace God showed to David will shine upon you and your life. Let me pray. Dear God, there is no one but you who is strong and merciful. There is no darkness in you. There is no sorrow and pain in you. Our mighty Father, we confess that we are weak like glass and we become incapable as time goes by. Help us to know who we are and how pitiful we are. 
come to us, O oh God, so that we can trust you more until we get to the place Jesus already prepared for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.